look at these pictures carefully. Did you find something common in all of them? Air conditioners. Yes, air conditioners have become an important part of our lives. Life without them can be uncomfortable in the summer season. But have you ever wondered what happened outside due to it? It becomes difficult to stay indoors without AC in summer. Fans and coolers also do not always provide enough coolness, especially where the temperature is very high. Everyone knows that living in extreme heat without AC can also have a bad effect on our health. Problems like heat stroke, dehydration and heat exertion can arise. On an average, between 100 to 2000 people die every year due to heat waves. This figure depends on the severity of the weather in different regions. Recent surge in temperatures across North India has caused serious concern with not just us humans trying to beat the heat but animals and birds around us who too are trying really hard to survive this heat wave. According to the International Energy Agency IEA, AC currently uses about 10% of global electricity. In India, about 20 to 30 percent of the domestic electricity consumption is spent on AC, and in urban areas, it can sometimes reach up to 40 to 50 percent, especially during summer times. The increasing demand and its excessive use contribute to global warming. This problem is really very disturbing. We use AC to cool our home, but due to its effect, the heat outside increases further. Then we need more cooling. This is kind of deadly loop in which we increase the environmental problems around us for comfort. Welcome to Simple Technology Channel where today we will talk about how the heat is increasing day by day and also learn about some traditional and modern technologies that do not consume huge amount of energy and can help us slow down this loop. History of AC In ancient Egypt, people used to keep water jars on the roof of the house to keep the buildings cool so that the cool air could come in. Likewise, Rome, rich people used a system of cooling the air through water in their homes. In 19th century, Dr. John Gorey, who was doctor from Florida, created a machine to provide cool air for yellow fever patients. This machine used to cool the air using ice. For this, he also received a patent in year 1851. In 20th century, Wills Carey developed a system in year 1902 that could control both humidity and temperature. It was first installed in a printing plant in New York to maintain the quality of paper and ink. Due to this discovery, he also considered to be the father of modern AC. Then in year 1920, AC began to be used in commercial places like theatres, offices and departmental stores. After the Second World War, AC became common in homes as the cost of AC decreased and at the same time, room ACs were developed and made available to the general public. Delima the U.S. has the highest AC usage in the world, especially in hot and humid areas such as Texas, Florida, and Arizona. About 90% of the U.S. homes have AC. AC usage varies considerably across countries like China with 800 million AC units, U.S. with 374 million AC units, Japan 148 million, India 27 million, same as Brazil 27 million, Mexico 16, and Indonesia with 12 million units. Developed countries such as US and Japan have the highest per capita AC usage, while emerging economic countries such as China and India are also increasing AC usages due to rising income and urbanization. This rising demand is a significant factor in global energy consumption highlighting the need for energy-efficient coding technologies. According to the IEA report, if the current trends continues, electricity demand due to AC could triple by year 2050, making it about 13% of global electricity consumption. Urban Heat Island Effect Urban Heat Island Effect or UHI Effect is a phenomenon where urban areas experience higher temperatures than their rural surroundings. 
This temperature differences is mainly due to human activities, infrastructures and material used in urban development. The first reason for urban heat island is that our urban areas are filled with buildings, roads and other infrastructures made of materials such as asphalt, concrete and brick. And these all absorb and retain more heat. The second reason is the industrial activities, transportation and AC which further increases heat and pollution. The third reason is that the trees and plants in the city are often combined with the impervious surfaces, which has an effect on natural cooling, which occurs through shades and evaporation. Traditional Methods Traditional methods have been used for centuries in various cultures to reduce the urban heat island effect. These methods often rely on natural materials and design principles that promotes cooling and ventilation. Traditional methods often have narrow alleys and dense buildings. This compact design layout provides shade and reduces heat absorption. Talking about the orientation of the building, it is often built with natural ventilation in mind so that the exposure to the sunlight during the hottest time of the day can be reduced. Middle Eastern architecture is at the forefront of natural ventilation. It has wind towers, also known as badgirs, which send cool breeze into the building while helping the hot air to escape. Apart from this, building materials also help to keep the building cool to some extent, such as stones and bricks. These materials absorb heat during the day and release it slowly at night, which helps in controlling the temperature inside the house. In many hot climate areas, buildings are whitewashed to avoid reflecting sunlight and observe as little heat as possible. Urban greenery, on the other hand, includes gardens, parks and tree-lined streets. Water features such as fountain, pools and small ponds help cool the air through evaporation. You may have seen all these techniques in Islamic garden design and traditional Spanish courtyard. Talking about havelis in India, they have courtyard inside with thick walls. Along with this, the jalis used to provide ventilation while blocking direct sunlight. Now, adopting these traditional methods in modern building is a bit challenging because due to rising temperature and changing climate, some traditional methods are not very effective. District Cooling Technology in Singapore District cooling is an advanced and effective technology that cools the entire district through centralized system. This technology saves a large amount of energy and emission as it takes advantage of large-scale operations and advanced technology. The district cooling system in Singapore uses a centralized plant to produce chilled water, which is then circulated through an underground network of insulated pipes to buildings throughout the district. Heat exchangers in each building transfer coolant from the chill water to the building AC system, which cools the indoor air. The system is more energy efficient and reduces emissions compared to individual cooling. It has many benefits, as it typically saves up to 50% of energy. In addition, the system reduces greenhouse gas emissions by optimizing cooling processing and using clean energy sources. It also has lower operation and maintenance costs on large scale and the installed building does not require an individual cooling system which saves space as well as noise. In Singapore, you can see this in Marina Bay district. It is the largest district cooling system globally covering residential and commercial buildings including banks, malls and prestigious hotels like Marina Bay Sand. In other cities, District cooling systems are now being implanted with innovative approaches. One example is Toronto, Canada, which uses the N-Wave system drawing cold water from Lake Ontario to the cool buildings in the city centre. In Paris, France, the district cooling system leverages an extensive sewer network, also demonstrating repurposing of existing infrastructure. Similarly, Hong Kong has successfully implanted district cooling in various regions highlighting its adaptability in densely populated urban environments. 
Meanwhile in India Gujarat International Finance Tech City also known as Gift City has incorporated district cooling into its plan All these examples underscore the versatility and effectiveness of the district cooling solution in urban settings around the world But they also come with number of challenges First the challenge is investment and the second is the complex retrofitting of existing building which can be quite expensive Overcoming these challenges will be crucial to the widespread adoption and success of district cooling initiatives. Conclusion This may sound fanciful but like other solution it will require a lot of upfront capital knowledge and of course awareness. Still experts say that the such investment is urgently needed whether it is city wise or neighborhood level. or in technological innovation especially in places like india china and indonesia where ac use is projected to increase given the time and environment we have no choice we simply do not have enough energy in the world to meet all the cooling needs even if we try to meet it through renewable energy i too cannot live in this heat without my ac but i try to use it as little as possible so how do you cool your house Let us know in the comment box below if you like the video please like and share it and for such mind expanding content to subscribe to my channel till then keep exploring and stay curious